Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new here, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you tarot and witchcraft is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back my lovelies. We are a little bit behind on the monthly readings. A lot of major changes are happening. We have major important astrological transits that are going to be happening in this month of March starting the 7th. So as you guys know, I'm sure you've heard, for those of you guys that are into astrology, we have a major change happening in the sign of Pisces with Saturn entering Pisces. Now this can affect you in a variety of ways depending on where you have your Pisces placement. And we also will be experiencing a major transformational type of energy collective-wise um, with Pluto entering Aquarius. Now, Pluto as Saturn are one of the planets that are very slow in moving, especially Pluto. It takes about 20 years uh, to go through a sign. So major changes that are happening. You guys stay tuned for those videos that I will be uploading to see how it's going to affect each one of the zodiacs. So let's get into the monthly March 2023 readings for all of you, my beautiful zodiac signs. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go starting with Pisces, as it is your month, Pisces. Bur happy birthday to all of you guys. Bright brightest of blessings for all of you guys that are turning or will be turning um, another turn of the sun. So let's begin here. I call upon all my wise and loving spirit guides, spirits of light and love, my ancestors and archangels. Please step forward. Allow us to see, hear, sense, feel, and receive the messages loud and clearly for each one of the zodiac signs. Let's see what each of the zodiac signs can expect for this month of March. We're going to begin here with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What are the messages that you have for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Pisces, a lot of transformational energy is happening in your sign. Like I said, Saturn is the Lord of time, the Lord of karma, the Lord of discipline. And you guys do have a tendency, right? It is in your nature, mutable nature, to run away sometimes with fantasy or to see things from uh, not very grounding and Saturn going into your sign is definitely going to ground you. It is going to teach you about discipline. It's going to teach you about maturity, obviously emotional maturity, uh, not seeing things through road colored glasses. It's, you know, the reality of things. Yes, you can manifest anything you want in your life. Yes, you can achieve your dreams, but with Saturn there, it's going to be about how you go about it to make that happen. Actually, you know, uh, taking the uh, energy of leadership, uh, taking the energy of taking uh, of goal orientation, of having to not only plan, but how to execute uh, to be able to achieve all of those um, goals and aspirations that you have. So again... Uh, a lot of, especially when we're talking about relationships and partnerships, um, a lot of changes are going to be happening there. Uh, no longer seeing or wishing or hoping that your partner is a certain way. It's about, is this working for me? And it's if it's not, Saturn is going to push you uh, to basically make decisions that are, you know, uh, Saturn's energy is all about longevity. So, if it's not really going anywhere, you're definitely going to be, you know, those emotions are going to be coming up where you're starting to see things clearly and concisely for what they are. Um, like I said, you guys stay tuned for all of those uh, messages, all of the, how it's going to be affecting every one of the signs. All right, let's begin here with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on for this month of March, 2023. What can they expect for this month, spirits? All right, let's begin. All right, we have the justice card here, death card. Wow, major transformation that is happening here. Obviously, we're starting off with major arcanas. Justice card is all about uh, making practical decisions with your mind, not being or run over with emotion. This is about what is beneficial for you, not what is hopeful. Meaning, 
not uh, making decisions based on, you know, your heart or how you're feeling based in that situation. It is about executing and making decisions, those hard, cold decisions that need to be made, but with a cool mind, meaning knowing exactly why you're making those decisions, not allowing your emotions to get the best of you, Pisces. It is about balance here. We also have the death card, transformation. They are transforming or uh, transmutation as well for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that have been going through uh, health concerns or health issues. There is a restoration that's happening. A, a lot of balancing is happening right now. And I feel like for a lot of you guys in this month of March, you may already be experiencing like a little bit of hiccups in the health department only because it is necessary for you to take care of that now so it doesn't progress or get into anything worse. Uh, so it is about balance here. Major transformation, like I said, the death card next to the justice card. It is about setting the tone for what is to unfold for you for the next coming two years, two years and a half. And it is about balancing, balancing acts. You're going to feel maybe already feeling like you're balancing your finances, like you have to be more watchful or more practical of how you spend money, how you spend your energy. What is it that you're doing in your downtime? It is about prioritizing and time management. Remember, Saturn is the planet of time. So again, it it's about being disciplined and being able to use that time or that downtime that you have for practical things that can ultimately help you better or make whatever goals you are destined or you are focused in achieving to actually make it happen. Again, like I said, it's not about running off of um, not reality and fantasy, but it's about creating your fantasy in the practical world here in this 3D. So a lot of transformative energy here that's happening Again, when we're talking about relationships and partnerships, there is a maturity of a relationship or a connection that has been unfolding or will be unfolding for you. There is an opportunity. There's someone coming through. If you guys have been dealing with karmic connections uh, or you're still dealing with an ex-partner, I feel like this month is the culmination of making the decision that you're no longer emotionally invested and being able to shut the door on anything that is no longer working for you. So again, this could be relationships and partnerships as well. People from the past that are no longer bringing anything to you, not even peace of mind. Um, it is about walking away from that to being able to move forward and to embrace a new beginning. Uh, opportunities here for romance and for money as well. Uh, Pisces, I would highly encourage you guys for the beginning of the month to be very practical in your approach of spending. Um, be smart about your money when we're talking about making decisions or, like I said, uh, spending money, <coughs> excuse me, spending money when we're talking about having responsibilities taken care of, etc. But just because you feel comfortable or just because you feel like you're in a place where, you know, you're doing pretty good you know, remember, Saturn is going to be entering your sign, and Saturn is restriction. So again, be smart about your spending. I see opportunities for you guys when we're talking about love and romance. There is something that is manifesting or that will be materializing for you guys um, when we're talking about emotional security, emotional stability. And again, with the death card, anything that's not working for you, toss it out the window, Pisces, because it is time to embrace, it is time to go into this new era, into this new energy, uh, and embrace uh, those new opportunities that are unfolding for you so that you can best benefit from these uh, transformative energies that are happening, okay? All right, my lovelies, now let's go to Aries. Let's see what's going on with Aries here. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What can Aries expect for this month of March 2023? Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Aries, we have the Lover's Card. 
King of Wands, the Hermit, the Sun, Queen of Cups, and the Knight of Pentacles. So a lot of opportunities for love and romance are currently surrounding you. There is a uh, grounding or a stabilizing of a connection or a relationship, especially those of you guys that have been dealing with someone that may be at a distance. Perhaps um, they're not in the same vicinity as you. Perhaps it's a bit of a travel uh, to get to you or to be able to connect or be able to spend time. Um, for others of you, it could be as, you know, mundane as just not being able to link up or hang out or make time for each other because you guys are being restricted right now in regards to um, other things that are going on in your life. But I do see some type of distancing here. However, this month there is a stabilization for some of you guys. It is taking it to the next level and being completely uh, committed to one another. Now, I do want to mention what I'm seeing here is for some of you guys, there is a desire, especially those of you guys that have been single for quite a while, there is a desire to really embrace love or to really, you know, perhaps you find yourself feeling like, you know, at this point in my life, it would be nice to have someone in my life to be able to share the good and the bad and all in between um, that type of energy. And I feel like, like I said, for those of you guys that have been single for a while, you are going through a cycle of purging. You are going through a cycle of healing. And you're finally coming out of that energy here with the hermit. You're finally being guided to put yourself out there and to fully embrace giving yourself the opportunity and allowing others to connect with you on a deeper level. I do see someone coming towards you. For some of you guys, you may be meeting someone while traveling or while uh, traveling, something that has to do with work or that is connected to work. Um, it could be that someone is uh, transferring to your department or going to uh, a specific department that maybe perhaps that they weren't doing before, or it could be a new hire type of thing. But I definitely see someone uh, coming in for you, and I feel like immediately the connection and the chemistry is going to be extremely strong. Um, this is a person that is very emotionally mature. And for others of you that have been dealing with relationships or are currently in a relationship, I do see the stabilization of it. And I do see some type of offering here. So it could be the conversation of the future. It could be a conversation of where do we go from here? It could be a conversation about let's move in with each other or let's make some type of higher level of commitment towards each other. But there is definitely the stabilization of uh, romantic and relationships. Like I said, for those of you guys that are single, there is definitely love surrounding you and you will be experiencing this connection sometime in this month of March. I see it more towards third, uh, third week of March um, where this connection happens. For some of you guys, it could be water energy. For others of you, it could be a Gemini that's coming through or a Leo. So uh, beautiful energy here, Aries. All right, now let's go to Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of March 2023. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is unfolding for them for this month of March 2023? Okay, here we go. All right, Taurus. We have the Queen of Swords, the Five of Swords, the Fool card, the Empress card, Five of Pentacles, and the Seven of Wands. I see you guys being more discerning this month about the people that you allow to affect you. So what I mean by that is what I'm hearing here for some of you guys, it is the I see you guys not taking any bullshit. Um, this month is definitely going to be challenging for you as I do feel that people are going to be trying to ruffle your feathers. However, what Spirit is telling you is that it's kind of like that, you know, that saying goes, um, if you don't have haters, you're not doing a, you're not doing a great job at what, whatever it is that you're doing, right? If, if it's not rattling someone, um, it's because you're not really challenging you. You're not really putting yourself out there. 
So what I'm seeing here is people really testing you, Taurus, and you being like fed up, creating boundaries, no longer like even creating or responding in snarky remarks. Um, and I feel that because at this point, you're like, you're not going to be putting up with people's BS. So we're talking about boundaries here. Uh, speaking up and being truthful to yourself, being honest and transparent, uh, even how you communicate. So again, it could be that you find yourself in the month of March, and I feel like there's going to be multiple situations, but there may be a specific situation where you kind of question yourself and you're like, oh, crap, I think I snapped. Because <laughs> there's like a feeling of feeling bad for the person that you snapped at. Um but I feel that it's necessary because at this point, people really have been pushing your patience or will be pushing your patience. So it is about being, like I said, being honest, um, not allowing anything that is bothering you, like just to sit there and steep. Uh, because obviously, if you let the tea steep long enough, it becomes very strong, right? <laughs> so what they're telling you here is be to the point if you need to be sharp in the way you express yourself. It is necessary at this point. There is almost an empowerment of energy that is happening for you, especially when we're talking about finances. You may feel like you've been restricted in the past, and the full card and the Empress only indicates to me opportunities of making more money or focusing a lot for this month of March uh, in your finances and in the lifestyle or the life that you want to uh, be able to materialize uh, down the road. So we're talking about longevity. We're talking about going that extra mile or thinking of the future and making or maybe even restricting yourself from spending too much um, because there's goals. There is determination behind you that is motivating you right now. So for some of you guys, I see you guys saving up to get your own house, to buy property, to buy some type of higher uh, expense. It could be like, like I said, a home. It could be a car. For some of you guys, it could be that you've been challenged in the aspect of, like an example, if you have a car, it's been giving you car trouble. You're really thinking about, you know, should I make that purchase? I do see it happening. Um, if you are experiencing that already, I do see it happening. However, they are telling you, be wise about the investments or the expenses that you're doing right now. Not because you won't be blessed. You do have the Empress and the Full card here. Very uh, powerful energy when we're talking about finances. But with the Five of Pentacles and the Seven of Wands, it's about being smart in your investments or being smart about making moves um, that are in reference to longevity. So again, obviously purchasing uh, a property, as an example, uh, versus a car, a car devalues, right? As time progresses, a home doesn't. So it's about being smart about your money and making those money moves um, and being very direct and to the point, knowing exactly what it is that you're doing uh, that is going to help you or get you to the goals that you're trying to achieve for this year. Um, but again, like I said, if you feel like you're being challenged, don't let people get to the, you know, get the best of you. Don't Don't allow people to really trigger you um i would highly encourage you guys to do some type of meditation for this month uh at least to disconnect and to ground yourself at least 15 minutes every day it's going to help you really be grounded and like i said not allow people to uh, get some type of reaction out of you because i do see a bit of a challenge in regards to communication and um people getting easily offended or trying to steer shit up just so that they can create some type of drama, okay? All right, now let's go to All right, let's go to <coughs> Excuse me, Taurus, okay Gemini Let's see what's going on with Gemini Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising Let's see what's going on with Gemini for the month of March, 2023. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of March, 2023. Okay, here we go. All right, Gemini, we have the full card. 
Five of Pentacles, Seven. Wow, okay. So for some of you guys, uh, you may be dealing with the Taurus. If you are, listen to the Taurus message. It could be in somewhat some type of connection with you. Um, okay, so what I'm seeing here, Gemini, it is... The Fool is representing a beginning cycle. It is representing um, being able to take that step that may be scary for some of you. Um, and this could be in connection to a relationship, some type of partnership, or for some of you guys, even a marriage. Um, you've been challenged, Demonai, the past couple of months. I feel like there's a lot of restrictions that are happening for some of you guys. It's the overwhelmingness of your finances, uh, perhaps being challenged in that department. And it starting to trickle or starting to affect the relationship. It's almost like, you know, obviously when we are in a partnership, um, in a relationship, it's, you know, when we're doing amazing financially, there is a feeling of security. There is a feeling of, you know, being comfortable and not stressing so obviously it's not going to affect the relationship or it's not going to challenge the relationship however when we go through financial difficulties there is stress and then you react in a way um you react in a way with your partner as in kind of like you know just not being on the same page and not fully being able to communicate or express or even understand each other only because of the stresses of the everyday. So I feel like you guys may be challenged. You may already be experiencing this, feeling the pressure and the tension in the connection and the relationship due to financial difficulties. Um, but what they are saying here is, you know, with the six of pentacles here, things will start to balance out in this month. Opportunities will start to come in, uh, Gemini. They are encouraging you, Gemini, like they did with Taurus, be smart about your finances. Be smart about your money. Do not put your money in investments that you know nothing about or that you haven't educated yourself or know enough about because it's not going to render you the results that you're exper expecting. Sorry, that you're expecting. So they are telling you, make decisions about your finances. Um, be wise about those decisions for this month of March only because you don't want to, uh, like I said, you don't want it to affect the relationship. As an example, you're going through difficulties. There's a feeling of desperation. And one day you decide to go to the casino and try your luck. And everything's going good. And then you get excited and you start to spend more. And then you lose it all. Obviously, coming back and not having the money that you started off with will create more difficulties in the relationship, especially if your partner finds out, um, you know, how negligent you were about the money. So again, you don't want to be making irrational decisions. Be smart and wise about your money. You are definitely having the need to uh, create some type of boundary. Um, so what I mean by this is those of you guys that are having financial difficulties in a relationship or in a partnership, if your partner is only complaining and whining about it, but not really getting off their ass and helping you, then there's a problem there. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like having the need to understand that not everyone should be relying on you if they're not aportando, if they're not giving something, if they're not helping the process or helping with the issues that need to be taken care of then it's time for you to pull back your energy. It's time for you to be more discerning and to be more straightforward in your communication because it's it's almost the feeling of like you see me struggling yet you're not throwing me the life, the, the what you would call it, the, the floaty thing. I forget <laughs> the floaty thing. Um, the life jacket, as an example, it's like you see me drowning and you're not throwing me the life jacket. Um, so again, it, it, that's and that's how relationships are tested. That's how relationships, you know, we go through difficulties in relationships only to solidify that relationship. If it crumbles under pressure, then it was built on very, very uh, not solid foundation. So again, 
Um, now, for others of you, you may be dealing with children. You may be dealing with a divorce or some type of separation. And instead of being on the same page and trying to work together uh, for the ch children's sake, as an example, I feel like someone's being petty here. Someone's making it more difficult. If you If you are currently going through this, it's time to teach them a lesson. It's time to put your foot down. If they don't want to, as an example, they make it really difficult for you to, um, you know, be able to, what's the word I'm looking for? If it, they're making it difficult for you to, if you're a dad and they're making it difficult for you to spend time with your child, yet they're getting child support or something like that, um, it's time to put your foot down. If they're not allowing you, then stop giving them the money. Um, you know what I mean? It's time for you to take action and not allow people to stomp on you, not allow people to take advantage of you. And this is in every single aspect of your life. This could be in career and finances. What they're showing me here is like there is a desire to continue growing, yet it feels like there are burdens upon burdens upon burdens that keep being given to you and not really being able to come up for error. So what they're telling you is it means that people are taking you for granted. And when they take you for granted, it's time to fall back and see, let them see what life is or how it is without you or without your participation in that connection. All right, my lovelies. Okay, now let's go to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages here that we have for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of March 2023? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the messages for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? All right, here we go. We have the Star card, Queen of Swords, Seven of Cups, Ace of Swords, Three of Cups and Six of Pentacles. Okay. So there is a situation that you're going to be dealing in this month of March, Cancer, where you were hopeful about the outcome. You were hoping, um, wishing, and desiring to have some type of clarity in regards to a connection, a partnership, or some type of relationship. This can also be uh, in your finances, meaning in the workspace, where I see a lot of rumors. I see a lot of non-transparency, and I feel like at some point you felt lost. You felt like you wanted clarity. You wanted to know exactly what was going on, um, but there wasn't there wasn't enough okay so basically what i'm hearing is you wanted an outcome you fixated on that outcome so much that you let a lot of red flags go meaning you didn't pay attention to those red flags and you are being tested right now with the understanding or the need to understand that we cannot always trust people at face value. So what I mean by that is if this is a relationship or a connection, someone you were dealing with, it's like they sold you a dream. It's like they sold you, you know, they learned you, they were able to tap into what your insecurities were, and then they became this perfect person for you, or at least they sold you that dream. And then they often made you feel like you, your doubts and your fears were unfounded. Yet, <clears throat> it was like, it's like they sold you this person, this image of them that was not real. And when you question it or when you question their behavior, they are quick to get offended. They are quick to turn it around and make you feel like you're the one that's not giving enough, like you're the one that's not doing enough. Okay? So what they're telling you here is pay very close attention this month in March because a lot of revelations are going to be happening. And for some of you guys, this is getting the, you know, hearing about it 
or someone reaching out to you through social media telling you that the partner, the person you were dealing with that you're going through the situation has been talking to them, has been messaging them. It's almost like you find out that they've been trifling, they've been trifling, or they've been stepping out of the connection, dealing with other people, and it comes to you almost as a surprise, but then you put two and two together and you come to the understanding that, oh, well, that makes sense because I was feeling this type of way and every time I would bring it up, it was an issue. It was like I was the one that was wrong for thinking wrong of them, yet they gave you a ton of red flags. Now, for others of you, if this is not to do with relationships, pay very close attention because what Spirit is telling me is you've been chasing and you've been on a quest of making some type of materialization, some type of manifestation. The star card indicates, you know, the, the being alignment, being in alignment, going towards your dreams and aspirations. Queen of Swords is executing, meaning goals, meaning taking the steps that need to happen to chase the dream, the desire. And in this month, the Ace of Swords is indicating that there is communication that finally opens up, some type of linking, some type of reaching out. Someone is going to be reaching out to you to try to do some type of partnership, some type of collaboration, some type of maybe even investing in you or in your product or in your business, that it's going to balance all the effort and energy that you've been putting towards achieving certain goals or achieving certain aspirations because what's coming through is wish fulfillment finally being able to see movement in that department i don't see the full-blown manifestation but i do see that the basically the chips are aligning and you're starting to see progress why because you get uh that contact uh, people reach out to you, they're trying to collaborate, they're trying to connect with you, they're trying to know about your product or your business or your services. And Six of Pentacles is ideally uh, coming to a connection or coming to some type of business partnering where it's going to be very beneficial for you because it's giving and receiving. Three of Cups does indicate to me celebratory type of energy. So there's some type of feeling of accomplishment here uh, for some of you guys for this month. So my advice would be to you guys, continue on with your manifestations. Continue on working as hard as you have because you're going to start to see things move in a very quick pace for this month. All right, my lovelies? Okay. Now let's go to Leo. Let's see what's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of March. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. You guys definitely stay tuned for the new video that I'm going to be uh, going up. That's going to be going up um, for the transits that are happening with Pluto and Saturn. So you guys stay tuned for that. For those of you guys that are new, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. Like, share, and comment. It helps our algorithm. All right, here we go. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of March 2023. All right, here we go. We have the Star card, Queen of Swords. What the heck? Ace of Swords, <laughs> you may be dealing or you may be connecting with a Cancer Leo if you are, uh, listen to their message because there is almost similar cards here in the very beginning. Um, two cards are the only difference here, okay? All right, Leos. So what they're showing me here is there is a cause for celebration this month. For some of you guys, it could be because there is almost like I'm hearing that there is a burst of energy that's coming to you guys in regards to your finances, in regards to your career. I see some type of leveling, of, leveling up of reputation, status, or um, position. So there is almost like a cause for celebration because there's a feeling of accomplishment or a feeling of an achievement here that's happening. 
And this is primarily having to do with, like I said, your finances and career. Now, for others of you, if you run your own business, if you run your own company or you provide some type of service, I feel that this month is going to be very monumental for your business or for your for your brand, for whatever it is that you do uh, in regards to your finances, because there is a, I feel like this month you're going to be experiencing a lot of attention, a lot of attention. Um, if you guys are on social media, I would highly push your business. I would highly push your services, whatever it is, really put it out there because I feel like people are going to be extremely drawn to you. Um, I see you getting a lot of attention. Like I said, being really drawn to you, even where you feel like there was specific people surrounding you where you kind of didn't feel very like their energy was very receptive. This is almost like the feeling of like people not really talking to you or liking you because because basically your energy is powerful and it made them insecure because that's what's coming through. Um, you're definitely going to notice like people are more prone to wanting to help you out or wanting to work with you. In collaboration um, this is even like as an example of you work at a business right and there are specific female energies that are not necessarily like they're the type that smile but you don't really rock with them like that I feel like they are very duplicit meaning they are very two-faced but I feel like this month they're really trying to work with you they're really just wanting to because they hear you standing out or they hear that your reputation is taking a higher level uh, this is you know like i said collaborators this is your boss this is higher ups this is supervisors acknowledging giving you attention giving you making it easier for you it's almost like it's almost like really feeling like you're this is going to be your lucky month that's the type of energy that I'm sensing for you, Leo, because, again, it has something to do with your person, with your reputation, or way, or the way other people see you. That are They're going to be very drawn to you. You're getting a lot of attention. And like I said, even those that not necessarily, you didn't necessarily rock with them, they're wanting to kiss your ass this month. Why? Because they hear, right, through the grapevine that there is an opportunity or that someone's trying to offer you a higher position that you may end up foreseeing the people that didn't really <coughs> like you that much. So again, there is some type of transitional energy here that's happening. But for a lot of you guys, if you're, like I said, if you run your business um, and you have social medias, definitely push your business, your brand, whatever services you're providing, really push them out there to the world because I feel like it's going to be, it's, perfect timing to draw in a lot of attention and a lot of opportunities. Now, for those of you guys that are single, I definitely do see uh, opportunities being around you, uh, though you may question some people's motives, but I feel like you're very intuitive, Leo, especially this month. You're going to be able to decipher uh, people's true intentions, who to give your op the opportunity to get to know you better, and who to close the door on. For some of you guys, there may be some type of clearing up of a romantic connection where you are unsure where you're at at this point in that connection. And I feel like you guys are making the decision this month to perhaps cut them out and start something new or to cut them out and give yourself, focus on yourself, put your energy towards you and the universe is going to bring to you new energy coming through because there is a lot of newness. We got two aces here. So Beautiful energy here, Leo. All right. Now let's go to Virgo. Let's see what's going on with Virgo. What are the messages for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of March 2023? Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of March 2023. Let's see what's going on with Virgo. All right, here we go, Virgo. Oh, 
powerful energy. Powerful energy here, Virgo. All right, Virgo. So your love life. <laughs> Your love life is definitely going to be very exciting this month, and I feel like for the next coming months. Keep in mind, we have, like I said, Pisces, or, or I should say Saturn going into Pisces. And what does this mean? That, well, if you're a Virgo rising, obviously your love life is going to be greatly impacted, right? Why? Because you have Pisces in your seventh house, and in your seventh house is where relationships and partnerships happen and Saturn going in there is definitely going to stabilize or bring to you some type of higher level of commitment or the discipline to be able to see people's true intentions take it as it is and no longer like basically cut your losses if it's not an investment that is practical even in relationships if they're not reciprocating um, so there is a higher elevation here that's happening in your emotional connections. Queen of Pentacles is your energy, Virgo, very grounded. Seventh house here with the lover's card. So this is an indication of um, relationships, partnerships. is going to be uh, taking a different turn with the magician. A lot of excitement, a lot of manifestations, a lot of... A feeling of celebratory type of energy why because you feel giddy because you feel inspired because you feel excited about the future you have the king of cups here so there is a water energy again if we're talking about astrologically uh, your love life is definitely highlighted here Virgo especially those of you guys that are Virgo rising uh, king of cups does indicate emotional uh, connection a could be an it could be a water energy it could be a water sign scorpio cancer pisces coming through for you making some type of offer now for others of you especially those of you guys that have been single for quite a while i see that you're being introduced to someone this month and it could be through friends or someone in your inner circle that introduces you to this new person you guys hit it off magically it's almost like the stars are aligning for that right <laughs> because they are <laughs> and it's definitely bringing like I said a lot of inspiration a lot of like your passion you know sometimes you can go about life um and if there's nothing exciting happening in your love life sometimes we can get ourselves in a rut where we don't feel that inspired that passion that you know intensity and I definitely see that for you guys for this month a lot of giddiness a lot of excitement a lot of like a lot of offerings and you see here a lot of cups being offered here it's like opportunity choices uh like i said astrologically you're being assisted right now the lovers is having to make decisions or having to make a decision between multiple opportunities that are coming through for you but i definitely do see someone coming in and for some of you guys, I will go as far as to tell you that it could be friends or it could be family members that introduce you to your next partner that's coming through. Now, for those of you guys that are in a relationship, there is a, a lot of romanticism, a lot of excitement, a lot of spontaneity type of energy coming through. So I feel like this month is going to be very exciting in regards to the intensity and the passion and the freeness of it all because it's feeling very spontaneous type of energy if you've been in a relationship sometimes we could kind of forget right and we think about the everyday type of responsibilities and we kind of forget about romance well that's definitely not going to happen this month Virgo there's a lot of excitement coming through for you guys so sounds exciting all right now let's go to Libra. Let's see what's going on with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of March 2023. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is unfolding for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of March 2023? Libra. All right. We have the Five of Wands, the Strength, the Emperor, the Eight of Pentacles, the Page of Pentacles, and the Seven of Swords. Okay. <laughs> I feel like this month, Libra, there's going to be a lot of trickery going on. 
when I say trickery, I mean people really trying to rattle you, trying to test you. I feel like there is someone that you may be hearing about that tries to, it could be that they come to you with a rumor, or it could be that they try to steer up something that is already in the works. So what I mean by that is it's giving me the vibes of like, Things happening and everyone coming to you and giving you like the rumors, the let, the let, the, what is it? Uh, the get down of what's happening. And I feel that this has a lot to do with you. Um, hold your tongue, hold your tongue, Libra, because it's, it's giving me, okay. So we have the seven of swords here and the seven of swords, you guys definitely like, you know, this is all about sneakiness. You know, people really testing, uh, trying to get away with something, trying to get away with the fact that they started some type of rumor, some type of, you know, they rattled everyone's feathers and they kind of, you know, they threw the stone and then they try to hide the hand that threw the stone. So if they come to you with rumors, if they come to you to try to steer shit up, or to get some type of reaction out of you, you stay in your power, Libra. It's going to be very important, very crucial to create discipline in your life and to not allow people to get you out of character. Um, and the reason I say this is because I see trickery happening. I see people, like I said, trying to steer something up. For some of you guys, this could have to do with a uh, family dynamic. Uh, it could have to do with your father figure. Um, now, for some of you guys, it could be that, you know, if you're dealing with a situation where your father is being with someone and that person is not necessarily well liked in the family, it could be that they try to steer shit up this month um, only so that the person that they're with, meaning your father, or this could be a male figure in your life, um, could take their side. It's almost like wanting to steer shit up so that they can side with them and create distance within the family. But I feel that if you're able to stand your ground, if you're able to not allow people to trigger you or to get you out of character and you can be smart about it and be cool and collected, it's not going to work out the way this woman expected it to. And in that, you'll be able to overcome this drama that is unnecessary drama. I feel like it's being triggered by other people. Now, if this if this message doesn't connect with you, um, with the father figure, it could just represent that there is the people that are surrounding you, friends, colleagues, um, family members, are in disarray right now. They like They can't seem to get on the same page. They're talking shit about each other or behind each other's backs type of situation. And someone may come to you to try to give you what's going on or the rumor, but it's in reality to get a rise out of you so that they can later say what, how you expressed it. And so you could be the one that basically get what your reaction is out of context on purpose just to make you look like the bad guy or look like you were the one that steered this up what they're telling you is rise above that okay for this month libra for this month do not fall into rumors do not allow people to get you out of your character and be smart pay a lot of attention to those around you what the conversations are what people are talking about if it's toxic, non-shit that has nothing to do with you, like stop messing with them or create some type of distancing or ignore the drama um, so that it doesn't affect you in any way. Because I feel like you're going to you're going to be dragged in this or for some of you guys, you're already going through it where like friends are wanting you to take sides and stuff like that. They're telling you, nope, stay in your power, Libra. Do not fall for that. Do not create any type of you know, unnecessary drama, stay in control of yourself, don't allow people. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, gets me is when you lose your temper, or when you can, you can't control your emotions, it just means that the people that were trying to get a rise out of you are smarter than you. And 
if you don't fall for that and stay in your power, they're the ones that look like, end up looking like the dumbasses they are. You know what I mean? So stay in your power. Don't allow rumors to change your perception of certain people because it could be that a person that is extremely loyal to you and extremely honest with you, um, you start to pull back because other people are telling you that they're talking behind you, but they're not. That person just doesn't like the person that is loyal to you. You don't want to burn bridges that are unnecessary to burn because they are true and loyal to you. Okay? All right, Libra. Now let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio here. What are the messages for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of March 2023. What's going on with Scorpios for this month? What are the messages for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Scorpio. <clears throat> All right. Scorpio, <coughs> this month, someone from your past is coming back around, or you may be hearing from someone from your past. Um, could be a person that in the past, or when there was some type of separation or distancing, they were blocked, or they blocked you type of thing. Um, I see them reaching out this month. It's almost like trying to mend fences. Um, but what they're telling you here is everything is in its due time. And I feel like this person is coming now out of a experience in their life where they were dealt with the cards that they dealt to you um, by someone else. So what I mean by that is basically what I'm hearing is whatever you offered this person that's coming back from the past, they didn't appreciate that. They went off and did their life trusted and loved and were taken for granted. So now this person is coming back because they realized or they've experienced what they could have put you through or <clears throat> what you went through. So it's talking to me about a person that you were romantically involved with in the past that is coming back around that will be trying to reach out to you. What Spirit is telling you is at this point, let them learn their lesson. Do not think that anything can come from that because you've outgrown this person. You are a different part or a different cycle in your life where it's not wise to go towards the past again. Okay. Now they are telling me also for some of you guys, if you are dealing with a situation where there's children involved, and you are in a committed relationship, meaning you're in a serious relationship or you're married and you have kids from another partner, I feel like this month you're going to start to see the... It's like they didn't make it easy for you or they were challenging you through your children. So it's almost like the situation of you know, you the parents divorce or they separate and they try to use the kids um, to hurt you. If you were going through something similar or something like that, I feel like this month you start to see why it is so important to come from a loving place with your children. So because the reason I'm saying that is I feel like your child will be going through a situation where they see your ex-partner for really who they are, it's either that they feel like they're being let down or they feel like they lied to them or deceived them. And they start to see them really taking your side, basically. Not in a negative way. Like I said, if you've been coming from a loving place and you've been extremely patient and been dealing with ex's bullshit, um, I feel like you see that it was worth it because you start to see your child or your children not necessarily side with you, but understand your point 
what you've been through. Do you get what I'm saying? So there's always a feeling of like vindication. Um, but I will tell you, do not allow the problems from previous relationships to currently affect your relationship or the people that you're with now. And the reason I say that is because boundaries need to be set in place. And this is something that I often tell, you know, clients when they're dealing with a new partner or they've committed or they've married someone and that person comes with a child or comes with, you know, children from a previous relationship. It is crucial and very important to maintain boundaries. Why? Because there are certain, you know, people can take certain, what's the word I'm looking for? What may seem normal to, let's say, two divorced parents that have been divorced and single for a very long time, how they deal with each other on an everyday basis may seem normal until you get yourself in a relationship and then the partner's like, why are they calling you at like midnight? You know what I mean? So I feel like this month you're going to be challenged in that aspect. If there is children involved, they are that you are dealing with a past relationship and a current relationship. I feel like boundaries need to be set, you know, they need to be set or they need to be created in regards to not allowing people from your past to uh, affect your current relationship. So this is what they're telling you. Be wise this month, create boundaries and don't allow um, what doesn't seem comfortable or what doesn't seem OK to your partner. Hear them out. Um, don't completely like block yourself and not try to understand them or be on the same page with them because it will it will deteriorate the connection and the relationship. OK, for others of you, like I said, I feel like just be mindful. There's a person that's from your past that will be coming back around. What they're telling you is that it is time to embrace the new. Uh, don't run away with expectations or fantasies that are not based in reality, especially if you haven't heard from this person for a long time. You don't know what's been going on in their life. Um, don't rush yourself and get emotionally invested in someone that hurt you in the past that could potentially hurt you in the present or in the future. All right, my lovelies. Okay, now let's go to Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius for this month of March 2023. What are the messages for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? What are the messages for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for this month of March 2023? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. See what's going on with my saddies. All right. All right, Sagittarius, what they're highlighting here greatly for you guys is relationships and partnerships are definitely something that are going to that's going to be taking center stage this month for you, especially those of you guys that have been single for quite a while. What they're telling you here is it is time for you to embrace new beginnings. It's time for you to have the courage and the tenacity uh, to put yourself out there. It's almost like the need to get out of comfort zone or the need to spice up your love life, uh, especially those of you guys that feel just awkward or feel off already because you've been single for quite a while. Um, or there is a feeling of like things never become something. Um, the reason for this is you are definitely disconnected, meaning you are definitely guarded. There is almost like a constant feeling of should I move on or should I stay? Should I move on? Should I stay type of energy here? I feel that for this month, you're definitely challenged in the aspect of having the need to be fearless when it comes to fighting for your happiness, Sagittarius, whether it's with a partner or whether it's with yourself. So what I mean by that is doing the things that make you happy doing the things that fulfill you and not primarily 
doing it for like to accommodate other people. This month is about being selfish and thinking of yourself. Stop worrying about your partner. Stop worrying um, if they're having issues like, oh, you need to fix them. You need to help them. You need to be there for them. No, what Spirit is telling you is that this month, it is going to be very important and very crucial that you receive as much as you, you as much as you give. And if you're not getting, then it's time for you to really write down the pros and cons. And if you find out that there is more cons than pros, then it's time to walk away, stop reminiscing or stop living in the past and see things for what they really are to be able to set a new journey or to be able to open yourself up to more bigger opportunities, okay? Now, when we're talking about love and romance, those of you guys that are single, <clears throat> like I said, there is an opportunity that's coming through for you here. I feel like you're stuck in between the past and the present. So you could be potentially, you could be single, um, but every time you meet someone, you just don't feel that connection. And the reason you don't feel that connection is because you're often either contemplating about a person from the past or someone you haven't fully moved on from. What they're telling you is that it's time to move on. Sagittarius, it's, it's time to have the courage to, to find your happiness and to do what makes you really happy, like genuinely happy. And stop doing what we've been doing for quite a while, which is reminiscing about the past or reliving the past or being stuck in the past. You have here two twos and an ace right in the center. So this is duality. This is the feeling of instability. There is something in your life where you feel like you're very unstable or like things just don't stabilize the way you would want them to. But if you see here, we see the male and female holding cups, right? Which is reciprocation. And we have the two of pentacles, which is you holding both coins. So what does that mean? That means that sometimes we don't allow ourselves to allow other people to give to us because we're either guarded or because we are so accustomed to being the one to overflow someone else's cup and to never receive at least even half our cup filled. So what they're telling you here is learning learning to make yourself a priority, learning to do what makes you happy, not because of others or how it affects others, but because it genuinely fulfills you, because it genuinely excites you, because it genuinely makes you happy. It's about letting go of the past and no longer living in the past to being able to have the courage to make new decisions or to be more spontaneous and move forward in the aspect of Finding or having the courage to find your happiness, even if it's not with the person that you always thought it would. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's about no longer wasting time and doing what is right for you. All right, my lovelies. Okay, Sagittarius, powerful message there. <clears throat> All right, now let's go to... Capricorns. Let's see what's going on with my lovely Capricorns, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for this month of March 2023. What are the messages for Capricorn? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of March 2023. Capricorn. All right, here we go. Powerful cards here, Capricorn. Beautiful energy. Alrighty. There is bountiful energy of abundance, Capricorn. I feel like this month and even going into April, there's going to be a lot of opportunities of making more money. For some of you guys, this is getting, uh, getting more hours, doing overtime. For others of you, especially those of you guys that run your own business, it is being able to draw in more people, more clientele, or people really 
feeling you or feeling your business or your brand, um, there is almost a feeling of having having opportunities that you never thought would actually open up for you or you weren't even aware that were there, that were existing. Um, I feel like there is a leveling up that's happening for you guys, not just in finances, but also when it comes to relationships. You have the Ten of Pentacles here with the Lovers card and the Justice card. So there is almost this feeling of being able to receive everything like the struggle the difficulties that you've gone through finally being able to see um the results of that the results of especially those of you guys that as an example you've been kind of ignoring or not being able to give enough time and energy to your partner it is like finally being able to see the physical results of that being able to see the money come in being able to put money on the side to set money on the side because it's finally coming through and it's finally manifesting for you guys. It is even your partner realizing, like being able to say, oh, this is why Capricorn wasn't really spending so much time. Like they've been really hard at work and they're finally being able to buy me that new furniture. They're being able to, I see in a leveling of your home. So this could be redecorating your house. For some of you guys, this could be giving your partner to redecorate the house, buying new furniture. Um, there is, like I said, a, almost like a feeling of structure and stability and being able to be at peace with that because obviously we all know if a Capricorn is not stable, <laughs> they, they cannot fully be, <coughs> you know, present in a relationship. Obviously, it's something that it's very, like, if a Capricorn doesn't feel stable, in their finances and career, it obviously is going to affect every other connection that they have. Um, but I definitely see that. I, I see like there is a feeling of releasing of a karmic cycle. So especially those of you guys that have been like really going through it, I want to say the past two years when we're talking about like solidifying relationships, when we're talking about solidifying, you know, your finances, um, there is there's been this like tons of pressure uh you know pressure coming from every aspect every angle um you guys have really gone through it and finally keep in mind right um we have pluto going into aquarius it's been pluto's been in your sign um it's been on your sign and it, it, it's you know a lot of like I said, a lot of pressure, a lot of a lot of stress, a lot of responsibilities, and you're starting to feel more like yourself again. I feel like this month, a lot of abundance is surrounding you, Capricorn. A lot of abundance is surrounding you, a lot of opportunities. And with the Justice card, it's almost like being at crossroads, right? Being at crossroads and being able to see abundance opportunities and realizing like all these years that i've been going through it that i've been working really hard that i've been struggling like it was worth it because the justice card is here to balance the karma the karma debt that you've gone through that the universe has been charging you for a while being able to release that and to feel genuinely lucky okay and that is something major because we don't, we don't often see Capricorns feeling lucky, right? <laughs> One of the signs that really has to go through it in order to achieve, you know? Um, so I definitely see a leveling up here with the seven of wands feeling a little bit. You're going to feel sometime in the month of March like you're kind of waiting the, for the other shoe to drop only because you're not used to things working out so marvelously for you Capricorns you have the world card here and the ace of cups for some of you guys there's engagement coming through for others of you there is a higher level of commitment that happens this month or going from now all the way to me there is a deepening of a connection a stabilization for some of you guys it is your partner reaching out um, sorry, not reaching out, <laughs> engaging or wanting to create some type of engagement with you, a higher level of commitment for others of you. It is actually deciding to move in together. So again, 
there's a deepening of stabilization that's happening here for you Capricorns in every aspect, not just in your finances, not just in um, relationships, but in every aspect, you're really being able to see the rewards of your hard labor and hard work. Obviously, you know, Saturn is a very heavy ass energy and it's something you guys have been dealing with the past couple of years. Um, and now you're going to feel like, you know, things are much easier for you. Things are, you, you can breathe. Uh, so again, very beautiful energy here, Capricorn. All right, my lovelies. Now we're going to go with Aquarius, last but not least. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of March, 2023. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is going on with Aquarius for this month? Obviously, a major transformational energy, Aquarius, with Pluto entering Pluto entering your sign March twenty sixth. All right, let's see. <laughs> what did we just say? Pluto entering your sign this month on the 26th. A lot of, obviously, Pluto, the lord of the underworld, the lord of transformation, of death, of rebirth, secrets. transformational energy here that's happening i feel like there is an ending to some type of connection here aquarius for this month um with someone that you've been either very close with or someone that you highly trusted this could be a friend um this could be for some of you guys even a relative someone that uh, was very dear and near to you i feel like there is almost a a culmination of being able to see through bullshit. And I feel like this month you may catch that person either speaking ill about you behind your back and you catch them or uh, rumors may come where it reveals to you their true like intentions. And this could even be the person um, expressing or saying certain things. It's almost like giving you a backhanded compliment and they've been doing it too often, too lately, that it almost feels like there's not really love there anymore. I feel like there is some type of, like, some type of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like some some sort of competition that's happening here and it's just not sitting well with you anymore. There's a lot of uh, a lot of changes that are happening here in regards to your past, in regards to your children, in regards to people that you've dealt with again from the past uh, that may resurface this month, uh, Aquarius. And it doesn't mean here's the thing: it doesn't mean if someone if an ex comes back around, it doesn't mean that it's perfect timing. Sometimes it happens because there are certain things that are still unresolved between you, but it doesn't mean that it it would generally represent them, you know, like, oh, maybe we can get it right this time. No, sometimes, especially with the, you know, transits that are happening right now or will be happening in your sign, it is about confronting things from the past that we're still carrying till now in the present that are highly affecting our way of living, our way of dating, or our way of viewing the world and how we are in the world. Do you get what I'm saying? It's almost like there are a lot of feelings that are coming up for you, Aquarians. A lot of things about reminiscing about the past or, you know, traumatic events for some of you guys. Um, the feeling of remembrance of those experiences, but... The reason why you're going through this, through this is because it's not because, oh, you're thinking about a person from the past. It must mean that they're thinking of you or that you miss them. 
No, what it means is that on the psyche level, right, these changes that are happening and the transit that's going to be, you know, Pluto, a very slow planet, it takes 20 years to go through a sign, um, is coming in and it's creating, obviously, transformation within you. But for us to transform, it also means that we need to really acknowledge the pain, acknowledge the scars, the wounds that we have accumulated throughout the years to really learn those lessons and be able to free ourselves from that and be able to see the world in much better eyes with more experience, with more wisdom, but also not allowing ourselves to be tainted. So all of these emotions that are coming up right now, Aquarius, is because there is a need of purging as well as a need of healing so that you can be much more empowered, right? It is very difficult for you to be empowered if you go about life, you know, thinking that one horrible traumatic experience that I had, I was a victim of versus coming to the realization that though maybe, especially if it was something that you experienced in childhood, though maybe you had no, you know, full control of what was happening in that moment in time because you were a child and others that should have been protecting you didn't, um, you're no longer that child and you as a grown adult can protect you, can love you, can take care of you the way you would have needed or wanted someone to do in your childhood. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's about, it's about embracing the difficulties that we've been through, especially if you're feeling like these whirlwind of emotions or you're thinking of people from the past. It's about internalizing the experiences you've gone through and cutting yourself free from the past to be able to fully embrace the new beginning the next major cycle in your life and to be able to embrace it to the best and highest of your good. Like I said, being empowered, being strong, knowing what it is that you want, being unapologetically in control of your life. You know, don't let life happen to you. You be the one to lead where you want to go in life. Especially those of you guys that have been keeping yourself either at a distance or have been finding yourself often in solitude or have pulled away and have become almost like hermit mode, this was necessary. And it is necessary. If you feel like you're going through it right now, it is necessary. Why? Because you're recharging, you're healing, you're purging. When you're able to get out of that energy, you're going to be much more stronger, much more wiser and going into the new cycle in your life much more confident in yourself and knowing with clarity of mind what it is that you want or the type of life that you want. Again, don't embrace anything that is above the past. If they're coming back around, don't be hopeful. You know, of course, let things happen organically, but don't let yourself run away with the idea of what may be. Just see it as an opportunity to really let really untie those, you know, untie those or tie those loose ends and be able to move on from that. Um, see it as a way or as a form of, you know, sort of letting whatever was pending between you and those people that are coming back around, you know, um, let it be almost like a, a way or a form of making peace with your past and freeing yourself from that. So again, I know that uh, Aquarians, if you're not already going through this, you're going to be experiencing this and it's, it, it's a bit of heavy energy. But again, like I said, know and understand that uh, these are just energies that are unfolding because we are going into a major new cycle in your life where is going to definitely affect you for the next coming 20 years. And sometimes it is important to take inventory, right? To go within ourselves. If you're talking about love, um, what is it that in the past, you know, has happened or has transpired that keeps you 
where you're at right now, maybe you're extremely guarded or you find yourself to be extremely like non-attached, very detached from people. It's difficult for you to connect with them on a deeper level. Why is it? it, it why, why is it that you are so guarded? And this is the time to really go within ourselves and figure out, is it, you know, whatever your situation is, um, so that you can fully be able to go into the next cycle, like I said, open and excited about the about, about what's unfolding in the future, but also not as naive as you were in the past. You're much more mature, you're much more wiser, but also don't allow yourself to be tainted. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings, like, share, and comment. Um, and like I said, you guys definitely stay tuned for the, I will be doing a video uh, speaking specifically about each sign and how these transits are going to be affecting you. Make sure to keep an eye out for that in the next coming two days. All right, my lovelies, well, I want to wish you guys all the very best. We'll see each other soon. And until then, bye-bye. <laughs>